Good morning, church family. family. It's good to see everybody here on this beautiful morning. Please bow your heads as I open us up with a word of prayer. Dear Father, we thank you, God, for giving us this day to come together, Lord, and to worship you, Lord. We thank you, God, for the love that you show to us. We thank you for Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins, Lord, for the forgiveness of our sins. God, please help us to remember that each and every single day, Lord. Thank you, God, for all that you do for us. Please, God, bless our service today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, look at your uh, bulletin for today. October 27th, 2024. As always, we invite you to Sunday School each and every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Please join us for Sunday School. We will be starting a new um, study lesson book in not next week, but the week after. That's always a good opportunity to get involved, but really any Sunday, please come and join us. It's always a great fellowship down there. It's always a good time, and we do have Sunday School for all ages, so please join us if you have that opportunity. 11 a.m., we have morning worship service, and this Tuesday, there's a ladies' Bible study at 1 p.m. This Wednesday, there's our grief class at 6.30. At 7 p.m., the cross Bible study, and of course, the men's Bible study as well. The building fund giving for September was $876. We're going to try to beat that here in October. We're, We're wrapping up October. So we just have another today and then the rest of just another few days to give to the building fund for October. So please, if you feel led to do that, please give to the building fund. Our box is right up here. And of course, you can do that on easy tithe as well. And you can just put that in your regular tithe as well and just note that you want that for the building fund. This is October and November coming up and what's already happened, the fall, the fall fest was a blast. Kim reported 30 children were there, 17 adult visitors, and approximately 20 workers. So that's really good. That was the fall, the fall fest. Fall games of bowling, the top three bowlers were from Salatiska. There was a great turnout from both churches. Costumes were a hit. Looking ahead for fall games, and I saw some of those costumes on Facebook, and those are really It's really amazing. I love to see all the people dressed up. October 27th, this is a big one, 5 p.m. Association Rally at Zion Baptist Church in Seminole. Um, It seems like in the old days we were having rallies all the time, and rallies are always a good time to get together with the other churches in the area, to, to fellowship with everybody all around. And so we do have that October 27th, which is today, 5 p.m. rally at Zion Baptist Church. October 27th. OKC Thunder versus the Hawks game at 6 p.m. And that is a good time of fellowship. If you have that opportunity to go there, you can get with the group that always goes to those games. It's always a fun time to be there. November 3rd, we will have a baptism at Harvey Baptist Church, baptism service. So please take note of that. We need to have as much support there as we can for our folks that are going to be baptized And of course, November 3rd, Daylight Savings ends. That's one of those where, you know, on your phones these days, they make that automatic adjustment, but you'll still feel feel those differences in your sleep. I like the fallback better. Fallback's better than springing forward. Um, November 11th through 12th, our annual meeting at Moore First Agenda on Baptist M. What is that, Baptist M? Do you know? Okay. Calendar for November is available on GroupMe, so please take a look at your GroupMe. Sometimes you get, um, I I know I do, I forget to take a look at GroupMe to see what's going on, but that's always a great way to keep in contact and know the latest that is going on. And all of the month of November, it is Wear Your Native Attire Month. So please, let's all try to do that if we can, if we do have those that attire that we can wear. At this time, I'm going to ask that Debbie come up and do our prayer emphasis. Debbie. Good morning, everyone. It's very good to see Renee with us today. We haven't seen her in a while. Exciting. 
And we want to continue to lift up those that we've been mentioning for several weeks, Randy, Darlene, Sally, Renee, Joel, Malia, Natalie, and their family. Encouragement for Mr. McGillberry and Jackie, and the Barnett girls will be traveling this week, so we want to pray about that. Missionaries, our church, different things. We're praying for a building, we're praying for workers, and we're praying over the activities that we have planned throughout the rest of the year to reach our community. The Alungas, the Greens, and the Colberts. So if you will, bow your heads with me as we lift these needs up. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we're so very thankful for this day and for the privilege we have to come into your house to worship you. We have that freedom and we just pray that we don't take that for granted and that we are thankful each and every day for the freedoms that we do have and for the privilege we have to bring our prayer request to your throne. You know about each and every person that we've mentioned today, you know the needs. You're always ahead of us on that, and your ways are greater than our ways, and we just pray healing touches upon those that are experiencing physical difficulties. We pray for our church and the many areas that we need um, need your guidance, and we pray that your will be done in these situations. We lift up the Alungas and the things they've been going through in the last few weeks, and we just pray a special blessing upon them as they carry on with your uh, ministry there in Africa. We pray for the Greens and a ministry that they have in our association. We especially lift up the Colberts and the work they have here at Indian Nations, and we pray for Randy in a special way. We're so thankful for the progress that he's made health-wise, and we just are so thankful for the messages that he brings to each and every one of us to um, take what you would have for us as individuals to learn from these messages. And we just pray that you open our hearts, our minds, and our ears, that we will listen and hear your word. And we ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Good morning, church family. If you'll just stand with me while we worship the Lord this morning and grab your hymn books, we'll be on hymn 17, To God Be the Glory.
Christ, be thou my vision.
you've got a really big crowd today. Looks good out there. It was good to see Renee this morning in Sunday school. Everybody, let's take this time to greet each other and say hello this morning to each other. Everyone, please shake hands. sweater and it made me think of Christmas. I know it's not a Christmas sweater. It made me think of Christmas. But I was noticing, you know, you see all the Halloween decorations out there, but there are people already doing Christmas decorations too. And it's never too early to start thinking about Christmas and to start thinking about the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. At this time, um, we are given the opportunity to have a testimony or a time of sharing. If you have a testimony or something you want to share with the church group, this is the time where you can do it. I'll say something. Um, I was really glad to see all the pictures from Wednesday night because like, we went in and we did the haunted house. And so we don't get to see everyone, but know a little bit we got to look out I saw some people and we saw the banana go through and you know, some other people but just to see all see all the different people that was that was really great um, but then just everyone coming together then too just I'm really glad that Renee's here today too just want to say that it's encouraging that you're here it makes me feel like <laughs> Amen. And they're both bionic and they work and they don't hurt. <laughs> Anybody else? Alex? <clears throat> I think it's time to stop letting them win. I think it's time. All right, if no one has anything else they'd like to share at this time, we will do our tithes and our offering. I'm going to ask that Letha and Jamie come up and serve our church today. I was going to ask Alex, but she said her knee hurt. So. Yeah. Jamie, we we please ask God to bless our offering today.
you please turn your attention to our bulletin today, to our scripture reading for today? We are in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 4. Will you please stand as we read the word of God today, please? If you're able to. Renee, you were able to. Thank you for those hips. Please read with me if you're Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in the newness of life. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us enough to die on the cross for our sins, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit who guides us and leads us and supports us each and every day, God. Please, God, continue to be with us. Please, God, bless our message for today. Be with Pastor Randy as he brings us your word, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning. <clears throat> Romans. <clears throat> I've always kind of um <clears throat> anticipated this particular message because I knew I wanted to speak on it at the uh, <clears throat> I guess right along right along with that ordinance that we know as baptism uh, next Sunday will be our baptism Sunday and uh, there were a couple churches in the running <laughs> But uh, Harvey Road Baptist Church, which is, you know where Harvey Road is, you know, over there, going to Walmart that way over there <clears throat> on the other big road. Uh, they called me the other day, and, you know, I, I, I told them, I said, well, we, we'd like to use your baptism waters or your baptistry if you have a baptism. You know, I said, we don't want to be any extra cost or, you know, extra water usage for your church, but... He said, brother, he said, I'll fill it up for you anytime you need it. <clears throat> so I said, well, how about the third? And so <clears throat> we set up a time, and, and uh, those of you who, uh, who got saved at Falls Creek or uh, even, even before that, and if you've never gone through baptism, uh, this, is, this is that time. And next Sunday... Uh, right after service is over, we're going to get ready and go over there. I told them about 1 o'clock, but I'm going to meet with all the candidates. So if you know somebody, uh, some of the other younger folks that might not be here tonight, today, let them know. And if they have family that want to come, uh, we want to invite them to be a part of that service over there at Harvey Road. And so <clears throat> they'll have the water ready. They said the water's got a warmer on it, so you won't get really cold. Uh, it won't freeze going underwater. But uh, it's just something that we, we feel as a church is, is very important. And so I'm going to get into some of those things today and uh, just talk about uh, a baptism in general. <clears throat> Again, it's been something that's been uh, on my mind and on my heart for some time, but because of my surgery, I couldn't get, I couldn't get in the water. And so I think, you know, I know, well, I know, but uh, where, where all my wounds or open things were sewn up and I got my stitches done and everything's closed up and healed up, I can, I can now get in the water. But the place we're going to, I don't have to get in the water. So um, it, only the candidate, only the candidate will, will, that I'll baptize will be in the water. And so uh, that was kind of a blessing. I, I didn't know they had anything like that. But we're looking forward to again next Sunday. So 
Also, any candidate that is coming to be baptized next Sunday, bring you a change of clothes that you don't mind getting wet and a towel. Um, and, and, and normally, um, I grew up in a church where they would provide you like a white, it's, it was symbolic of the grave clothes, but it was like a white linen sheet. It wasn't very big, but you, you would wrap that around yourself and sometimes around your head and, and, and you would baptize you. Again, that, that symbolized grave clothes back where I was from, but uh, we, we might not have that today. Um, but I, I ask you if you bring something to be baptized in, uh, especially the ladies or young ladies, uh, wear something dark, okay? Just wear something like a dark shirt. Uh, again, and again, something that you don't, you don't mind getting wet in, and uh, we'll go through uh, baptism. Usually baptism is always a, a good celebration time. Uh, it's a good fellowship time, and, and, and it just shows some things about church health that are very important to what we're doing. And so again, take this time this week, make those contacts. Uh, those of you who, who know of somebody that needs to be about, I think, uh, was it Preston? I think Preston was wanting to be baptized and others uh, within our group here. So uh, again, that will be next Sunday. <clears throat> and if you need to remind me of, well, I, I, I got saved back before, you know, whenever you came or whatever, and you know, you want to be baptized, let me know. And so take that time to do that today. <coughs> I got a little excited yesterday for about 30 minutes. <clears throat> All right, Romans chapter 6. <clears throat> want to talk about baptism. You might think this is more like a Bible study, and it is. But I want the church to understand the importance of it. <clears throat> And as we read, it says, Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in a new way of life. Baptism over the centuries, as far as biblical history has been concerned, there's always been differing opinions of how baptism ought to be carried out. And of course, the main, the main thrust of an example is through the scriptures. And throughout, again, throughout history, there have been some theologians and some ways of thought that tell us that this is the proper way to be baptized. Um, <clears throat> when you look at the scripture, there's a lot of good evidence that I support as being Baptist that this is the, the correct way of being baptized. Now, sometimes, sometimes people will ask me, is it a requirement to go to heaven? You have to be baptized in order to go to heaven. How many will say yes? How many will say no? It's not a requirement to go to heaven. Okay, if you're just barely don't want me to see you. <clears throat> it is not a requirement to go to heaven. If you'll recall the thief on the cross when Jesus was dying on the cross, he said, this day you will be with me in paradise. So Jesus didn't have time to take and say, hey, disciples, come and get this guy off the cross and go baptize him before he dies. Okay, He didn't have that time. But baptism, again, and we'll get to the specifics about it, baptism is not a requirement for eternal life. Okay, when I worked at Sem when I worked at uh, Southwestern Seminary on Friday nights, I was I was I worked the uh, what do you call it, where the main phones come into. Uh, I can't remember what that's called. <coughs> what switchboard? Yeah, I worked the switchboard on Friday nights, and sometimes you I would get strange calls from people. One of the calls I got one time was. Uh, was, was used to be a professor there a long time ago or a pastor that came through there. And the question was, this pastor led me to Christ, but I've just heard he left his church no longer preaching. He said, does that mean that I'm not a Christian anymore? 
And I thought, why is he calling me at 1030 at night to ask me this question? And so I just simply said, I said, well, who did you place your faith in? You, did you place your faith in that pastor or did you place your faith in Jesus Christ? He said, well, I, I, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I, I, I'm going to look into it more and I'm going to pray about it more. I said, yeah, I said, that'd be a good thing to do. And then I've, heard, I've had one call one time that said, so-and-so baptized me. But I found out they didn't even have a credential as being a pastor of a church. And so does that mean I, I got baptized in the wrong manner or wrong way or, or uh, I'm not a member of that church anymore? What, what does that mean? And I said again, I said, what does baptism represent? I said, does it represent just you and your church or just the, the, the relationship between you and your pastor? And they said, well, no, I guess it doesn't. I said, you're right. I said, it represents the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That's the relationship that's at, at stake here. And so those kind of calls always came through, and it seemed like they were always on Friday night asking people, asking questions about their faith, calling the seminary. And here they were talking to a, a, <clears throat> a, a seminary police officer, answering the phone, you know. But when we look at the scriptures, when you think about baptism, again, first and foremost, like I just said a while ago, first and foremost, baptism is a representation of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay? If you want to write that down first thing first, it's a representation of the death, burial, and resurrection from the grave, and it guarantees our new and everlasting life. Not the baptism itself but in what the baptism represents. Again, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And we've, we've spent ample time, we've spent a lot of time this past summer and parts of last fall talking about who is Jesus, why Jesus, why his death, burial, and resurrection. And that baptism, when we go and, and, and we put that person under water, the pastor puts a person under the water, it's a representation of that death. You go underwater, you're buried you're buried under the grave of the water. Even though you don't die, you don't physically cease from breathing, it's symbolic. Again, it's a representation of the, of the grave. We place you under the water and we bring you up out of the water as risen, as a resurrection, to walk in that newness of life. And again, <clears throat> several people ask questions, even in our native churches. I don't, I don't want to be baptized in a, and I'm not trying to be racial here, but sometimes they'll say, I don't want to be baptized in that white church. I say, how come? Well, it's just not the way we did it. And they almost put a sense of, well, if I don't be baptized the Indian way, it's not any good, okay? Because when I, when I was baptized, <clears throat> When I was baptized in our church, in our little old home church back in Tuskegee at Eufaula, McIntosh County, our we, we didn't have a baptistry. Just, you know, just like here, we don't have a baptistry. And so we went to my grandmother's pond. We had church for a little bit, and we all got in the vehicles and drove over to her property, went through the fence and went up into the pasture. Everybody parked around the pond, and they had it set up. They had a big old staff sitting out there in the water when we got there, they, they put, that, they put this, this white cloth over our head, <clears throat> tied it back here. And then they gave us a white sheet, a little small white sheet, and they wrapped it around us, and we walked out to the water. And the deacon would take us and walk us out to the pastor. The pastor was out at the staff, and he would be waiting. And that pastor would walk, or that deacon would walk us out to the water. When he would say a few things and just do the little things here and there and then turn us around, and he would say that, that word, buried in the likeness of his death. And he would take us and just dip us under that water. And what I rem remember when I was baptized, all I remember is I forgot to close my eyes. And I saw that, that brown, reddish water just sweep over me. And then he brought me up. And then once I got out of the water, the deacon helped me to the edge, they had some blankets tied up to these little trees, and you could go and you could change your clothes behind there. Mom and Dad had dry clothes for me, and once I, once I got out of those, I, I toweled off, dried off, put on some new clothes, and we went back to the church. 
And then we had a probably about two hour service, a baptism service. Pastor talked to us about different things, and he would give us a Bible, and they would come and shake our hands. And yeah, it used to last about two hours. The whole thing used to last about three, almost four hours in the afternoons. I promise I won't be that long. But that was my experience. And again, sometimes people put, put a lot of emphasis on that, that reality as if it were... I'm going to say a word, but it, it, it's really not that difficult of a word to understand. It's called salvific. It doesn't, it doesn't amount to one's own personal salvation. Okay? Because I've seen where even some people, they want to be baptized before they die. Thinking that that baptism will give them an entry into heaven. But again, baptism in itself will not does not guarantee your salvation. Okay. About the same time that I was baptized, we had a young, another young man who came and he wanted to be, he got, he got saved at church and they told him, we'll baptize you in about a couple of weeks. Well, he was very insistent. He said, but what if I die before those two weeks are up? And so he wanted to be baptized immediately. Because again, he felt like his eternity, his salvation was all based upon that event of being baptized. I just remember what just a few minutes ago, what did I say about baptism? First and foremost, baptism is a representation, a representation of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave. Again, it's a guarantee. It guarantees our new life in our eternity. Again, not the baptism, but the death, burial, and resurrection. And that's what baptism represents. Okay. When you go and you go to the, into that water it, <clears throat> and, and you were saved, False Creek. Some of these young men were saved at False Creek. You know, <clears throat> and, and if they were to pass from this life before they were baptized, they'd still be in heaven. But as we go along in, in, in the doing this for next Sunday, again, it represents something very important. Okay? Again, it's the representation of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Matthew 28, if you'll look at Matthew 28. <clears throat> and you'll know this as in the scriptures as the Great Commission. <clears throat> Not only is it the representation of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave, it's also ordained by Jesus Christ himself. Notice the scriptures. <clears throat> he says in verse 19, Go ye therefore, that's King James, but it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Again, it was ordained. Not only is it a representation of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, it's also ordained by Jesus himself. And it, what, what, what the scriptures tell us in this particular passage is that the language is suggestive that it is an ongoing practice of the church. It's something we ought to be doing. What's the command there? What does he say? Go. Go. And who's the audience? All of us are, aren't we? He says, go, ye therefore. In other words, he's talking to us. He's talking to us as a church that we ought to be on the move. We ought to be on the move in missions. We ought to be moved to, lead, to, to reach others for Christ. We, we ought to be on the move for evangelism. We ought to be on the move for the sake of Christ. And so baptism in itself was ordained by, bapti by, by Jesus Christ. He says, go again, go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I've heard a lot of people say this and a lot of preachers say that, <clears throat> that baptism is an outward sign of an inward reality okay an outward sign of an inward reality 
That means simply, we believe that baptism in itself is normally what we would consider the first act of obedience to Christ. You gave your heart to Christ, you put your faith and trust in Christ, there ought to be an outward expression of that. You were saved. You were saved at Falls Creek. You were saved at certain certain church. Or you were saved at VBS or, or wherever it may have been. That first act of your obedience because of your faith and because of your commitment to Christ ought to be followed up by baptism. And that's what Jesus tells us here. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I'll get to that one. That's going to be one of the last, last points. <clears throat> But it also represents our union with Christ. If you look there at our main passage that we read for today in Romans chapter 6. I lost my spot there, but let me get to it. <clears throat> it also represents our union with Christ. Again, the verse says, Therefore we were buried with him in bap by baptism in the death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in a, in a newness of life. <clears throat> Baptism dramatically portrays what happened spiritually when you received Christ. Think about that. As a representation of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, it dramatically portrays what happened to you spiritually inside. That's a big deal. It isn't just some religious rite. It isn't just some religious ceremony that people at a certain age have to go through. Again, I grew up in a church where people would, I, I would hear this in the conversations within our church. They would say, well, you, re you really shouldn't get baptized until you're 12 years old. Does anybody know where that came from? Does anybody know? Jennifer, do you know? Anybody ever heard that? So you can't bat baptize. Why, why did they say that? Okay. Why not 13? Yeah. Or why not 10? A lot of it comes through the Jewish tradition. If you'll recall the bar mitzvah, the coming of age, and all those things of, like Letha said, understanding that 12 years old. But what if I never reach 12 years old? Yeah. So that's kind of what a lot of people begin to think, and, and I heard that growing up. Well, you don't have to be saved until you're after 12 years old. And I said, where is that in the scripture? They never could say. Because in my, in, in my youth, in my, in my younger days, I, I, I was a skeptic. I wasn't a non-believer, but I, was, I wanted to make sure I understood everything before I did it. But I heard that lady tell me that one time. Oh, yeah, you don't have to be saved until you're after, after 12, when you turn 12 years old. But I understood I was lost when I was eight or nine. I needed a savior. Baptism, again, dramatically portrays what happens spiritually when Jesus saves us. Again, baptism in itself does not save a person. And it's much like a wedding ring. You know, when you get married, there's an exchange of rings. There's a part of that ceremony where you exchange rings. The man will put the ring on his bride's finger. The bride will take the ring and put it on the husband or, or the man's finger, and they'll exchange vows. Now, <clears throat> is the ring, does the ring make you married? Does it? It's not, does it? That ring doesn't mean you're married at all. But what again, what is it? It's a representation of your love and your vows to love that person until death do you part. And that's kind of like what baptism is like. Baptism shows your devotion. It shows your commitment to what has taken place already inside. And it becomes an outward expression of an inward reality. 
God has done something in your life. When you received Christ, your old self of unbelief and rebellion and idolatry died, it says. And now, the new you, the new you of faith and submission came into being. And that becomes a confession to the world. It shows the world that you've taken what you've done. And it's a serious thing for you. Because it has now become your life commitment to serve and to, and to follow Christ. Union with Christ. But also we think about, well, what does baptism mean? Baptizo, baptizo, baptizo. Again, when you look at the word itself, it means to be immersed, to be put under. Again, much like a grave. You put somebody in the grave or you put somebody in the tomb and you close them over. That's the word that we see in the scriptures. It's an immersion. So that's why we as, as Baptists, we, we, don't, we don't do baptism by sprinkling or we don't do infant baptism. Because again, it, is an age, it, is a, it does come at a time when we understand that we're lost. When we need a savior, whether it be 12 years old or whether it be 7 years old, we come to an understanding that we need Christ. Because there's an eternity out there. So we're immersed. We have to understand that. Because again, in, in, in my life as in, in the ministry, I've had a lot of people come to me and say, can you baptize my baby? I have. Over Oak Mogi. Well, they said, can you sprinkle my baby? And so I, you know, I, I gently explain our position as a church about accountability knowing that they're lost or separated from God and that they need a savior. They have a need. An infant doesn't know that. But again, they, 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 they're desperate because they want to make sure that their baby's going to be okay. And after I explain our position, they understand more. And that in turn gives me opportunity to tell them, have you come to Christ? Have you been baptized, not as an infant, but do you have, do you, do you know for certain that you're, you had that need for Jesus in your life to save you and have been baptized, to have that outward expression of an inward reality? But when you look at the scriptures here, again, it talks about burial in, this, in Romans chapter 6. And it describes the burial in a grave. And then rising up from the dead, just as God called forth and Jesus walked out. Very representation, representational. The last thing that we'll see, or the second to the last thing, is that you'll hear the terminology. Baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death. That put you under. Why does it say the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Remember, we just read the Great Commission just a few minutes ago, Matthew 28. Go ye therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That simply means that not just any immersing is baptism. Not just any immersion is baptism. But what it is is an appeal. As we, as we lower that person into, their, into the watery grave, it's an appeal for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to be present in what it means in their work of redemption. It would take many good studies for us to fully grasp the act of redemption because not only is it just in the gospels you see it in the old testament as well you see it throughout the whole of scripture god's plan for your redemption and we simply appeal in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit again it's just not any immersion this immersion is based upon the, the, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ. 
Again, it's a outward expression. Throughout Scripture, you'll, you'll see other evidences of these outward expressions. You'll, you'll, you'll see in the Old Testament and New Testament, even the act of circumcision. You know, in the Old Testament days and even some of the part of the New Testament, you'll see a reference to those. You must be circumcised. Take those kids. Make them young boys. They need to be circumcised unto God. Does that, does, that, does that include us today? Is that a requirement for us to have an eternal home one day? Is that a requirement for us to go to heaven someday to be circumcised? No, it is not. But what Paul speaks of, he speaks of a circumcision of the heart. The fleshly heart ought to be cut away to release the newness of the Spirit within our lives. It's not, a phys- it's not the physical act. It's a spiritual act. Again, a represent- representation of what they actually did in the Old Testament days of circumcision. It was a very physical act. It was a very bloody act. But now, in Christ, we can have a circumcision a spiritual circumcision of the heart. The expression of our faith is the last thing. Again, we are baptized, and baptism, again, is only for a believer. Again, I've had people in my, in my lifetime to call me, and they'll tell me, I need to be baptized. And so I'll ask them, why? How come? So they'll tell me, well, I feel like that, um, you know, my life will be better or one day I hope to go to heaven. And so I want to be baptized. And so there again, I'll get to the point of asking them, do you know what baptism means? I said it's representative of a changed life. It's a representation of what God did in his death, burial, and resurrection. And I'll ask him about that. And I'll ask him. And I'll present the gospel to him. But you know, in the end, a lot of times when they ask that question, well, you've made it more than what I, what I believe in. And so I'm just going to pass. They wanted to go through the act. But it was the wrong act. And so when we think about the expression of our faith, it is only for those believers. You know, just like that young man, his name was Bruce. He got saved. And they said, we'll baptize you in a couple of weeks. Well, he wanted to be baptized that day because he was afraid if he would have died, he would have gone to hell. He was, base, he was basing his, 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 his physical baptism in a pond to his eternal life. He had the wrong conception of what baptism really meant. So in our understanding of what the scriptures tell us, and let me me read this again. In Romans chapter 6, he says, Therefore we were buried with him by baptism in the death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in a new way of life or to walk in newness of life. Now I could stand here and just say, if you need to be baptized, I'll see you next Sunday. That'd be easy to do. Or if you've never gone through baptism, I'll see you next Sunday. We need to get you in the water. That wouldn't be entirely honest and true of me saying that. But the scriptures tell us there, the representation of why we baptize. It's so that in order for us to be baptized, we have been saved and we can walk in newness of life. The simple question is, am I walking in that newness of life today?
Have I been saved? Has God truly saved me? Or am I just going through motions, coming to church? Am I just going through the motions of saying I'm a spiritual person? Am I going through the motions of just saying, yeah, I believe that stuff in the Bible. I, 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 I think about the Bible. I think about God. I think about praying sometimes. Has God truly saved you? Are you walking in newness of life today? There's a difference. When you know Christ, you ought to know the walk. When you know Christ, there ought to be a newness in your life. And not just a ritual. Not just a ritual baptism where water, all you do is go in wet, you go in a center, you go into the baptistry, and all you come out is a wet center. It's just a ritual. But again, the symbolism or the, the act behind it is relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you have that relationship with Jesus Christ? Do you understand your standing before him that one day you're going to stand before God and give an account of your life? You're going to say, well, I was baptized at Indian Nations Baptist Church, or I was baptized here. And what if God just simply said, oh, you just went through a ritual process. You were baptized because everybody else was doing it. You were baptized because you were afraid that you might go to hell someday. You were baptized be for all the wrong reasons. Again, baptism is rooted. Baptism is an expression of our faith that we've placed in Jesus Christ because of his death, burial, and resurrection. Are you saved today? Think about that question. Think about it honestly. Am I saved? Am I a Christian? Am I walking in newness of life? You might say, well, I don't want to answer you, Pastor. Who am I to answer to you? Well, you're going to have to answer to God someday. Have you truly been saved? And are you walking in newness of life? If you're not, you're not truly saved and you're just here going through the motions, you ought to get saved today. And you'll go through one of the greatest things the church can ever do, and that's to baptize you next Sunday because it's now real. Let me ask you to bow your heads for a moment. Have you truly come to faith in Christ? And have you followed the Lord in baptism because of that decision? If not, today would be a wonderful day for you to make your reservation in eternity. Again, it's based on the relationship you have with Christ. And it's based upon his death, burial, and resurrection. Because he loved you. He loved you enough to die for you and to give his life for you. That you would have eternal life. Don't go through the motions. Don't fake it. Receive it. Receive him into your life. And next Sunday, we can baptize you because it has meaning to you now. You can walk in newness of life and you can show everybody in the world as a witness to what you believe that Jesus is the way. Again, if you've never been saved, you come today. I'm going to have just a little bit of music. If you need to be saved, you come. Lord, we just thank you just for a moment here. The gospel is the message that you love us, that you gave your son who would show us in his death, burial, and resurrection to be able to walk in a new way of life. To enjoy a changed life, a transformed life, and one day walk in the halls of glory. Lord, we don't want the, we don't want ritual. We 
want the real thing. We don't want just a fake faith. We want a new living faith. Draw us to yourself today. Draw us to yourself to be saved. Lord, we can celebrate with baptism next Sunday. Draw us to yourself. Draw us. You come. here that aren't here today who are candidates for baptism because they've, they've come told me already but if you'll remind them next Sunday is our baptism Sunday okay tell them where we're going to go Harvey Road just over here a mile or so uh, across across the way um, wear something dark dark shirt something you can get wet in um, and a towel change of clothes um, <clears throat> and we'll, uh, right after service next Sunday, right after, like right now, I want to meet with all the candidates. So we'll just come up here and we'll sit down and we'll just kind of go over a few things. And then everybody will go over to the church over there and we'll do our baptism service over there. Okay. I think usually we, I don't know if the church has any on hand, but we usually, what I've seen is that we get you a certificate of baptism which is a legal document, okay? But that's not what gets you into heaven. It is still a legal document. But also we get, we get a Bible. You get a Bible with this. And so um, we'll look to get those things ready uh, for next Sunday. So it's going to be an exciting time. Um, you, you'll, you'll be glad you, you are a part of the service, okay? So again, about 1 o'clock next Sunday, if you want to get something to eat, then go on over there. Um, however you want to do it. But we're, I told them we would meet over there about 1 o'clock, so next Sunday. All right. Everybody clear on that? All right. Make sure, again, we're going to meet with the candidates right after church next Sunday. All right. Yes, ma'am. Come on down here. Is it Renee? Yeah, come on down here, Stan. Some of our ladies, if you want to come and just put lay hands on her, we'll have a moment of prayer. Anybody else need a prayer prayer request or you got something you want to pray about? We can pray with you down here as well. So some of our ladies, if you'll come, pray with Renee. <clears throat> Then the church, let's stand. The rest of the church, let's stand. <clears throat> let's all pray together. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we can call upon you but for any need, any desire, or anything that within your will, we know as we call upon you, you, you will see to it. You will minister to our hearts. 
minister to our lives. And Lord, we just lift up Renee to you this morning, Lord. She says she, she, she needs the power of forgiveness in her life. And Lord, whatever the things that, that bind her heart, Lord, that you would release. Not only for her good, but because you say that you know, we need to be able to forgive so you will forgive us. We can't just simply pray and ask everything to be made right for somebody else until things are made right with us. And Lord, we ask that for her on her behalf, that Lord, you would minister to her spirit of forgiveness for herself and also a heart of compassion for others around her and the situation that may be, or that you would just grant that unto her. Thank you for loving her and thank you for her coming here to be with us today. Thank you for your ministry of prayer today. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, we ask this. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you, folks. We'll see you Wednesday night.